it's with tons of gratitude that we acknowledge the privilege of your company on another journey of course loaded as usual with insights i'm tariq edivan jr and this is what you look up to going forward Within a context wherein people evolve, conscious of the fact that the fear of the gendarme, and more so the army, marks the beginning of wisdom, this would seem surprisingly strange. How are you people to get out of fear? People are mostly talking about fear. People are afraid, afraid and afraid. Afraid of what? I never got the answer of this. You people need to get out of fear. But yes, Despite the rather bellicose relationship between the army and Abazonia fighters across English-speaking Cameroon, the dreaded rapid intervention battalion, the B, has been enacting what some term charm offensives, like here at Big Nganjo, along the Kumba Bonge Road in the southwest region. And then elsewhere we ask, is Cameroon getting it right in its efforts against the spreading coronavirus when it leaves markets and bars open up until 6 p.m. as if the virus was sleeping to wake up then? Meantime, critics say the country is putting up a very bad example with high-risk personalities allowed to roam free. And that's why I'm troubled. Uh, by what the Speaker of the National Assembly has done. He checks all the boxes of someone at high risk. He's 80 years of age, chronically ill, and has been to Europe recently. He should not have been seen in public. And then, meet this young lady, Tata Bongbeyala, who is giving men a real run for their money in the production industry in Cameroon. They don't even believe I'm the one doing it because I was mentored by a man, yeah. So my mentor even had to ask me to, to depart from him for me to prove to people that I'm the, I'm the one doing my work. So, so they don't want, they want to believe that it's really a girl doing it. fully versed with the contents and menu of this installment of Inside of course the weekend edition. It's time for us to move on and we'll start out by treating you to uh, to something uncommon right. This is what Henry Kejan will call Roots Makusa. It's done for us by Dwala Boy. It's big like huge you know. It's called Peugeot BB. That's supposed to be your friend. Eh? Oh come on yes we knew ourselves a long time ago. Um, we used to share good moments at Rue de la Joie. Daido. Daido. That's you know, that's where you go eat fish. Yeah, I go eat fish, you know, you hang out with friends. I, I remember one time we were at Rue de la Joie, like you were just talking about with Peugeot Bebe, very huge. <laughs> so there was this noise about wars in Africa. So one lady came, it was a friend from Europe. And so when, when we went to Rue de la Joie and saw very bulky Cameroonians eating fish and make, merry making and so, but where, where is the war? We, we are told that there's a lot of war. So, no, but there's war somewhere, not here. Ah, okay. <laughs> Come on. Right, Rue de la Joie in Douala is uh, where people go to enjoy, especially during the weekends. But of course, with the uh, virus care, I'm not sure you can have that kind of man, you know, gathering there to eat fish, miyondo, and drink uh, a couple of bottles of beer. Here's a Peugeot Bebe in Asangoloba. <laughs>
Singing a song all over. I mean, what a song and what a timing. Because at this point in time, many just say, Kamu needs all the prayers it, uh, it, it, it can have, right? To be able to ask, implore God's mercy. Uh, you know, we're going through a couple of crises. Speaking parts of Cameroon, it's, it's still escalating out there, the violence. And now, the coronavirus care. And talking about it, the government has been enacting several measures aimed at curbing the propagation of the deadly virus, of course, across Cameroon, and these include border shutdowns, limited numbers of people at public gatherings, schools, suspended, and so on. And we are we getting it right? Would you conclude that the government has it right this time? Well, I think the government is... Some say it's better late than never. Well, it's not even better late. We are right on time uh, because the propagation rate had reached unprecedented level, especially in Europe, especially in Italy, mm -hmm. and uh, so... Italy had 400 people dying? 475 in 24 hours. Yes. It was too much. Yes. It was too much. So I think the government scary. is doing everything. Very scary. Uh, the government is doing everything. However, um, I think shutting the borders, uh, whether air, land or sea, is not enough. Uh, there should be more measures, contingency measures to the, the, the spread if 
if uh, it penetrates the neighborhood and the fear, remember what happened the last time the uh, Abo, uh, F, um, Airbus A320 arrived or landed at the Dwala and Simalang, or rather Dwala International Airport, and one that had landed at the Simalang, we've been hearing stories of big gongs speaking their own, you know, directly because they knew that even though their presence would probably influence, you know, influence badly, you know, come and pick your, your wife at the airport or as a big man, so nobody will question why a minister took advantage and sneaked into and the, sneaked the wild. Into the wild. With the, with now the, the government, uh, like you asked, if we are really getting it right, the government did not get it right from there uh, because we've not put that structures where you could isolate these people, tested positive. Um, we are Some told been kept at hotels. At hotels. Uh, uh, there is a hotel. There is a hotel at about um, a thousand miles. Uh, here, yeah. <laughs> I'm not safe. Yeah, we are not safe. Right? Yes, it's a hotel yeah, from uh, about a thousand meters from us here. Um, the hotel was secured by the government to uh, keep these people pending. Mm -hmm. Whereas, I coming out from the plane. Uh, y y if you are controlled and tested, you should be moved directly to, to the confinement. Right? Uh, unfortunately, they were kept, they were supposed to, you know, be confined in the hotel with the whole domain because of uh, professional reasons or concerns. And at the end, they were in the wild, like you said. Mm -hmm. So if these guys were infected, or they are already uh, carrying the virus. It means they'll just throw into the neighborhoods, in the quarters, meet friends, family members, and spread it. In some neighborhoods uh, where some of these hotels for the confinement are actually based, uh, the, the population is coming out gradually and saying we don't want these people around. The population is coming out because uh, they are not safe. And the workers of the hotel, you know, the hotels... Is health is health is health, yeah, yeah. You don't know. And the measures these hotels have even taken before I don't know if they have a standby medical service, you know, to make sure they check these, these, these people or they just bundle them, pack them in the hotel, you sleep there, you get up and, you know, you, you get up, they clean the, 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 the hotel room where you are, uh, under what condition are the people uh, would you, would protected. You, would, you, would you go to such, such an hotel? I mean, in the future, if we know that... How will you know, yeah. by the way, how will you know? Yes, yeah. in the future, I think uh, standard hotels are sterilized. Okay, standard hotels are sterilized. Um, their beddings are sterilized, the rooms are sterilized. You, you can be comfortably lodged in such hotels. But if you don't know, I'm talking about a very short spell where you hop into a hotel and then they tell you suddenly, uh, you check in. And say, uh, well, that hotel, uh, those about 50 people came from France or from Europe confined mm -hmm. in this hotel for uh, as a measure. You see, it is scary. Okay. Yeah, it's scary. Uh, and it, it business, you know, it slows down business. Let me play this game with you uh, just briefly. Uh, if, if, if you had to give the government a score on 10, what would that be? I would give the government 4 over 10. 4, that's a... Uh, yes, yeah, it's a mean, field mark. All right. Yes, it's no, field, uh, just been far below average, you mean. I'll ask you this question and we come back to the scoring again. Come on. On 10. Come yes. on. Okay. Here is a government that allows the markets open, it allows the bars open, it allows the public spaces open until 6 p.m. During the day. Is that virus sleeping and only waking up at 6 p.m.? Good question. Go to Good question. In fact, I should even go down to grade the government 3 over 10. <laughs> yes, <laughs> in fact, I even forgot right? because, in fact, uh, the government has failed. And you see, when the child scores 3 on 10, it's, it's, not, um, it's not good enough to catch up. Mm -hmm. Because you don't close, you don't allow the hotels or the bars, the drinking sports, the snacks, the pops and, and the pops, right. and then you close them at six as if the virus works during the day mm -hmm. and at night the virus sleeps. Okay, so if it during sleeps during the day and wakes up at night, that's from six. Minutes. Yes, it, yeah, it sleeps during the day. Whereas that is even the time that people are get more, more and more people get contaminated. Yes, I know. In the night, if you move, for example, in those very popular areas, joints, Rue de la Choix, wherever. Uh, there's a lot of, especially days, a day on days like this, weekends. Aqua and Bafusam, Down Beach in Dinda. There's a lot of concentration of those square in Kumba. Good, but down. Uh, it, is, it is better. Malingo Junction. Yes. Right? But sometimes, pe most, most people don't even move into these clubs at, at night. Even during the day, people, people sleep in clubs, uh, people uh, hang out.
uh, people interact in buses okay people move um, to offices people move in the markets how do you do you know exchange you know money exchange hands right and so through the money through the, the good items move to the markets people don't put on gloves you know to be able to you know if someone has to rub his face or her face even if you rub your face it's obvious that you might rub your face even having the gloves right but once you rub your face and touch the product the item the food stuff if it passes on somebody picks it up and says, mama how much is this okay please can you break down in the process anything happens in the multiplier yeah, effect yeah, the propagation yeah. rate okay and then we, we we live in a society where where we depend heavily on cash cash right? we depend heavily on cash you know, cash, cash and carry cash and carry that's the easiest way to spread, to spread it spread the virus in the, the market <laughs> you cannot the, the markets okay it's impossible to close the markets it's impossible we are not here in europe okay it's impossible so if you say okay markets you open during the day good people will have provisions um so what's the solution? If you, if, you, if you score the government 3 on 10 for the markets, for example, so what's the solution? No, for now, 3 on 10 because of the contingency measures put in place uh, to avert it. Now, we are still asking if it should spread, if we should start recording cases of deaths. Okay, here, oh, 5 already died in Yaoundé, 10 in Wala, uh, 3 in Bafusa. No, you're just uh, saying, so we are just saying started, that if, if it happens, yes, if we started hearing this type of stuff, so not like... What are we going to do you at that level? And then we start hearing of hundreds, right. you know, fifty, hundreds. That's where you get, that's that's where we get to get more confused. And then you get, we get more confused. Are you going to do a total yeah. shutdown of, of all the structures, offices, or etc.? How do you start filtering out these people? That is the fear, the worry. Okay. Are the structures enough to contain or to have all these uh, people, if at all? They are, they are infected. So it is a problem. We are just praying. And someone said there were 13 measures that the Prime Minister rolled out. Mm -hmm. um, but the 14th measure, uh, measure rather, the, or the, the, the Prime Minister forgot the 14th measure. What was that supposed to be? Prayers. All right. That it should not touch us okay. the way it is touching Europe that or Italy. Pray. That we should pray. That would have been the 14th measure. But now, even in, the church, the even in the church houses or in the synagogues or in the mosque or the churches, they are equally going to shut down. So today is Friday, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday. Today is Friday. We need to go to the mosque and find out because, you know, the Muslims will pray today. Let's find out from the mosque whether there are more than 50 people. All right. Okay. Well, then on supposed, Sunday... You are, not supposed, you are not supposed to go to church because if you are more than... Yeah. And a certain number you cannot you cannot be allowed even i think the imams and the priest or the clergy will be able to take care of that uh, and so spend everything right I yeah. mean, that's the solution yes yeah, so now harry uh, president donald trump says uh, chloroquine uh, comes in handy uh, i'm not sure because as soon as he said that people were flanking him on the same panel actually said uh, there was no verified evidence to back up what the president was saying but let's move out of this now and stay on the lines of the politics because uh there is the Speaker of the National Assembly who came in, frail and ailing, um, and then got to the Assembly and was re-elected. Yes. Um, is that a case for concern? It is a case for concern. Well, I think he, like, like you were saying about President Trump, you know, Trump's measure was just chloroquine, maybe they will call that a, a prophylactic treatment, you know, where you just need to take it, you know, as a means of curbing it, you know, reducing the, the weight <laughs> in the, the, reach, impact, uh, the impact on the right. yeah, but now the the speaker, the House Speaker, well, House Speaker elect, uh, flew in from 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 sickbed, uh, where he had been bedridden for months. Apparently unwell, right? Apparently unwell because frail, you know, from his countenance, he could judge that um, he's not feeling fine. I just like I said the last time, I just hope that after this session, he will now fly back to France, or uh, to continue his treatment, or they might fly in the medics uh, for him to take the treatment now back home because of the uh, corona coronavirus well he has harvested his crown because if you look at there's one very fashionable and good headlines or caption uh mutation who did it you know wearing <laughs> the, the crown mm -hmm. of on kabai's head to tell you that that is his that is his throne and nobody can dethrone him from that 
warriors harvested the, the, crow, the throne, the bureau of the National Assembly has been put in place with the secretaries, the vice speakers and the questors and so on and members of the respective commission. What will begin to be? Um, but there are still fears. Uh, I spoke with, uh, of course you certainly have it, with um, uh, occupational um, medicine uh, practitioner. Yeah, we're going to hear from him. We are certainly going to hear from him. Um, who said, well, the Speaker of the House of Assembly is a lawmaker, should not violate the law. Right. But he actually, um, um, he actually refused to subject himself to the prescriptions of the government. Confinement. Confinement. All the right. government led by Prime Minister, head of government, who gave instructions for people to... So now, parliamentarians are seeming scared. Some, yes, some, are, some are saying this behind, right so some are saying this behind the, behind the, you know, under the door, under the tables, but you know, they are afraid, okay. they are not safe. Thanks for coming, Henry. It's a pleasure. So we're going to introduce your friend now, because we're moving on to hard talk very soon. He's the general coordinator of a party called the um, Cameroon Federalist Movement. He's actually based in the United States of America, where he has as occupation preventive medicine. He's called Dr. Wilson uh, Seme. He was here, right, during the National Dialogue or something, and That's he correct. had his views, and when they were not taken into account, he flew back to the United States. Now he says, Cameroon is a nation where bad examples are repeated every now and then, and he uses the case of the Speaker of the National Assembly we were talking about a while ago to say, this is a country where the fear of people in authority, you know, places the others at the mercy of whatever comes their way. Listen to him very carefully. I just love the way he puts it uh, because he says the entire National Assembly should be quarantined. Let's hot talk. My name is Dr. Wilson Aseme. General Coordinator of the Cameroon Federalist Movement. I'm also a board certified physician in preventive medicine in the United States. I'd like to use this opportunity to address the Cameroon public of the seriousness of the coronavirus. It is a global health threat, a very drastic situation that calls for drastic measures. So if you're in Cameroon and listening to this, please avoid any public gathering of 10 people or more. Wash your hands as many times as you possibly can. Stay home as much as possible, especially if you are above 60 or you have, or if you have any chronic illness like diabetes, cancer, HIV, lung infections, or heart conditions. Avoid bars and restaurants. Eat at home. Situations like this require public leadership from our political leaders. And that's why I'm troubled uh, by what the Speaker of the National Assembly has done. He checks all the boxes of someone at high risk. He's 80 years of age, chronically ill, and has been to Europe recently. He should not have been seen in public. He should have put other members of parliament at risk. What this situation does show though is not only the weakness of our public health structure. It exposes the fundamental inefficiency of a system that is built on the fear of authority and on favoritism. In Cameroon, there are two kinds of people, those to whom all the rules, laws, and regulations apply, and those to whom nothing applies. And obviously, the speaker belongs to the latter. Therefore, it is my medical opinion that the entire Cameroon House of Assembly, including the Speaker of the National Assembly, should be asked to self-isolate for the next 14 days, or if need be, they should be quarantined. This is for the general good, the general public health of all Cameroonians. Uh, a whole lot, 
right on stuff and material on the coronavirus care. We'll be getting to to them one after the other as time moves on. Mokum Thomas is here from Bamenda. And with him we'll be looking at uh, how does life look like when you are a reporter in Bamenda, you know, in the English speaking parts of Cameroon in general. Michael Foncha is gonna be around with the trending PJ news stories. Tanfu Jones is also expected to come along with uh, what's ticking on the social media platforms. But then, let me tell you about something else, right? It was supposed to unfold in Kampala, Uganda from the 16th to the 17th of April. But as a result of the scare, the virus, right? It has been moved to July the 23rd and 24th. Yeah, I'm sure I'm correct. Right, and I'm referring there to the 2020 Africa Youth Conference. He is here because he's president of the Africa Patriotic Youth Council movement. Yes. Thanks for coming, Ernest. I'm happy to be here once more to update our youth on how things are unfolding. So it's a pleasure. And uh, before we go ahead, I'm going to ask if you're disappointed as a result of the adjournment of this very of big course. meeting. But then, congratulations for the appointment that you have. Right? Thank you so much. Have um, you been appointed national? Uh, and coordinator for the set event. And we think that uh, most of us are disappointed because this is an event where a lot of uh, respected people with uh, people like Professor Lumumba was supposed to be making hey, a speech friend. there. Hey, and the Leo. president of Uganda Leo. was supposed to be present and yeah. a lot more of uh, patriotic Africans which would have learned a lot from them. Uh, you know, the coronavirus issue has really shut down a lot of uh, activities right. globally and that has affected our activities as well. So we are disappointed but we are not giving up, we still hold on to that uh, upcoming event. Actually, there were supposed to be two events in uh, Uganda coming April. Okay. We have the African Patriotic Youth Council uh, movement, Uganda event, and coupled to the NRO Committed Association of Uganda, which has, uh, is piloting this uh, event as well. Okay. So this event was supposed to take place both in April, but unfortunately we are where we are today and we just pray that uh, our people within the continent should be saved while we look forward for that day to come. They should remain uh, safe and protected. July the 23rd and 24th is not supposed to be very far, but provided the, uh, the virus uh, Give yeah, room it gives for, room for that to happen. For public but I believe to begin again across the continent and across yeah. the world in general. But uh, what, what was going to be on the menu? What is supposed to be on the menu at yeah, the 2020 this, Africa Youth Conference? Yes, this event was supposed to talk about Africa as a global power, becoming a global power. It's and possible. also, it's possible. And the Africa problem become a global power? It's possible. The problem is the mindset. If they, we reform the mindset towards that, we can as well achieve it. It's not a problem of... The problem is not what has happened to Africa. What has happened to Africa has happened to other continents, and we have seen them where they are today. So it, uh, the problem is what you do about what happened, the measures you take after an effect that occurs to you. So we look forward to see that we reform our mind towards believing that we can do it. Because uh, when you look at Europe after this Second World War, uh, nobody will believe that Europe will still be where it is today, why Africa is where it is now. So the problem is, is, is the mental ability to see things possible right. and the strategy put in place, the belief that uh, you can make it using your own skis, you can depend on your effort. The problem is as long as you don't give up, you are moving forward. Right. I, I actually look at you every now and then and I really admire the, the passion that you have for the empowerment of young people across Africa. Mm -hmm. But every, I, every time I'm looking at you, it's with a bit of uh, sympathy. Because I say to myself, this guy is wasting his time and effort. Because that paradigm shift and that mindset alteration you're talking about is not going to happen in this generation. Our young people are into the beer, the cigarette, the nightclubs, and the music. And so there's, there's nobody who's <laughs> ready to, to think about how do I get a satellite up uh, into space to make Africa. And that is where I power. find it a big burden on my side because actually what you are saying is very true. You know when you are thinking of a problem that is affecting you, mm -hmm. you are gradually getting a way out 
from the to resolve that problem but unfortunately our mind has not been shifted towards the direction in which it should be now mm -hmm. even at the level of the at the national levels you see the implementations of government policies it doesn't favor the youth and how they yeah it doesn't it doesn't make them feel that their dreams can be achieved mm -hmm. so i believe that it's as a result of what you are saying that has always pushed me forward because I've read about great people they didn't just get up to be great and uh, you see that they, they have kept a lot of tenacity they did not give up even when it was so they, they find no possibility to move forward they believe that something can be done and eventually something happened that they emerged to be where they are today the problem is just the ability to believe that there is possibility tomorrow even if you cannot see it now so, 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 yeah, and I like it when you, when you end there because it's been lingering on my lips. Do you think that because even if you cannot see it now, the achievements you're struggling to, to accomplish, do you sometimes sit around and think that I'm preaching in the wilderness? No, I have never seen that happening to me because <laughs> when I read about uh, people like uh, the f president of, uh, former president of, uh, Ghana, Kwame Kroma, he, he had a vision for the continent, and if people had believed what he foresaw for the continent, we would not be where we are today. He died without achieving the dreams, and Gaddafi as well put forward good dreams that admired us to today. We still feel that uh, if some of those dreams were being achieved, we would not be where we are today. But those dreams have actually driven Africa forward positively because when you read you know, we need a revolutionary for mindset my, for my sake, yeah uh, to an extent as of now Africa need a revolutionary mindset not mindset that will not politicians politicians will not lead us to where we are they have been there for close to 50 years our problems are only increasing what do we do should we continue to rely on them why they use us for their material ability so I don't know and so that's, that's we look forward to seeing a system where we own the, f the future belongs to us not to the ancestors that's that are still alive it's, it's yeah. Yeah. yeah we've they have told us that and those that are supposed to be telling us that is should be ourselves not the grandfathers in s sitting in big positions and telling you knock you, them off you knock them off by uh, strategizing a formula that works is that why you're going to yeah because to when, you, when you when you, you think do, about taking the old yeah because off not, the seats of not taking them off Africa. the problem is even you take them off without the per, our generation having the right ability to lead it, it means nothing uh -huh. it's better to let somebody there who has at least an understanding of how things work but it's also worse if you take that person out without having somebody to replace the person so the problem is when we realize that uh, the foundation has been laid and everybody now knows what is good for Africa. The African you can now know that uh, if we strategize like this, this is going to take us to our destiny. By the time we see those things happening, by the time we have reasons to believe in ourselves, by the time we believe that when Africa comes together, there can be a solution of this crisis because ideas will be exchanged and at the end you will have some resolve that will be better than if you had sat in your own room alone to actualize this situation. So that is our vision. We believe that when two minds meet, they cannot come back with the same thinking. But uh, you need a critical mass of young people across the continent to mm. be able to effect the change. You that is why we look forward to impacting this uh, understanding in them, in them, so that by the time you are saying one thing in Cameroon about moving Africa forward economically, somebody in Nigeria should be saying the same in East Africa, in North Africa. When this mindset is cooperating within the continent, we have it moving as of now we have 36 african countries in the apycm the african patriotic Youth council movement That's quite this a is number, right? yeah that at least we have taken half of the continent of and I mean, and if we point. now uh, as we look forward to strategizing our resources on how we can stand on our own to build up the formula that will lead us to where we are going you will still you will start seeing that things are changing because at the time when we now have our meetings without calling our government to give us uh supporting funds uh i think that is the moment we start believing in ourselves and seeing possibility coming through as of now if you have a dream and you want someone to push forward when the 
the finances, the possibility of pushing forward the dream is in the control of someone else. Just know that that dream is not longer, it's not yet yours. Who finances the Africa Patriotic Youth Council? We believe that the, the, aspect, the aspect of financing this organization is self uh, uh, contributions because we believe that we are still looking forward to put in place strategies, not only strategies, but physical possibilities of financial. Uh, that is how we can generate income on our own. Like you, you know, why I'm asking you that question because I love this adage that goes something like uh, uh, every gift is like a moral cord. Yeah, and it's tied around the neck of the recipient by the giver. Yeah. You know, so if the government give you money, they will expect that you sing the song according to them. Uh, on, on. Yes, that is actually we had uh, people wishing to support us. But the problem is when you start accepting support, you are actually it's just like a bribe. So I mean, in when you words, accept you, you support, deny. sometimes you refuse and you reject the money. As long as it does that? not, you first you have to be analyzed if your vision towards our dreams is also one of the consideration why we should think that you are supporting us genuinely. Right. Because if we have seen you as a brutal politician. <laughs> and you wish to stop or support us, it means that you are going to brutal our organization and as well we will not move so forward. So in other words, you, you don't take we, donations we, from any kind of person? Yes, we don't, we don't have we, yeah, we, a, a lot of screening action. process because a lot of dreams like this has come out and die because of uh, misunderstanding of uh, those that are wishing to come into the organization. Well, what's, what's the relationship you have at the APYCN? With, with the governments in Africa as we speak to you we actually you, our relationship uh, yeah our relationship has to go with other youth organization and non-governmental organizations because uh, we also wish to build a very trust and productive relationship with African government because uh, it's really like this cannot go without contradiction comes in. Yeah. these are the same government you're, you're, you're just impatient to eject Yes, when we, we said that, when them. we said we want to deal with government, meaning that if we approve that uh, the possibility of having four is two plus two, and we present the formula <laughs> to the government, <laughs> and we present right? <laughs> and we present the formula to government. Actually, if you are not a wicked government, you will have to accept the formula that is right, and okay. that should be the formula that is moving African forward. Right. That is what we mean by making the government believe in us that we are not going to lead the continent down. All right. That's it for the relationship that you have with the government. Yes. Uh, in Cameroon, for example, let's limit it there. There is a, an organization called the National Youth Council. Yes. What's your relationship with the National <laughs> Youth Council? Uh, my Which relationship with the government. Uh, okay. Yeah, the relationship with uh, You know, I'm part of the uh, Cameroon National Youth Council. Right. I'm the divisional president for Cameroon National Youth Council at the uh, for Fontaine, uh, Le BLM division. Yeah. And uh, I want to say that. I am embarrassed with the, the way the National Youth Council is structured, and not only with the way it's structured, it's not, a, it is just like a dream, it's just like a political instrument put in place by the government to control the youth. I'm sincerely saying this because... Well, you're still in there. Why don't you resign and give it up? The problem is not resigning. I, uh, I have opted many times to do so, but since the time is running out, uh, I just believe when this mandate go, I shouldn't be part of what is not producing. In, in other words, Ernest, yes. what I'm saying is, I mean, the statement because that actually is going to the be government has not. Statement. There is if no you step out of the place and say this thing is not functioning as it should function. That statement will, will make will make a lot of. I I have things. I have written a lot of uh, I've granted a lot of interview on that on how we can at least push the government to recognize that. Power given to the youth in Cameroon should not be man, uh, should not be uh, should not be verbal. It should be mandatory. And to an extent, you see Cameroon just put up a structure today, and tomorrow it disappears because they are putting those structures to appease the international community for nothing. And it's because we have accepted ourselves to be used like slaves and those that do not have and anything to offer. So and and the problem the is, the I, I like I have a lot of things to do at the continental level and I also need this relationship at the national level but because the relationship at the national level is not conducive enough I am appealing that sometime the search 
you have to continue until you reach where you can no longer take it. Okay. Because I'm still seeing, thinking that the government will listen to our appeals and put in place some measures that will suit the youth and maybe make a Cameroon National Youth Council a better one that people outside the National Youth Council can admire. Okay. You know what? I, 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 I want to wish you a lot of luck. Good yeah. luck on your journey. I know it's going to be a very tough one. Yeah, it's going to be. Uh, since you have that passion and it's burning and burning, yeah. I just believe that someday you'll be able to break through. Uh, I'll ask you this question. I'll give you 30 seconds to, to respond. Okay. It's going to be a tricky one. Are the young people across Cameroon ready to embrace empowerment? Are yes. they willing to take up the challenge? Yes, they are willing. Put destiny into their own hands? They are willing. And uh, the, the only thing is that they are not willing to do what it takes. They are willing for change. But you know, before you achieve something, you have to do what you have, before you achieve something different you have to do something different what's that something different the that something is? different is thinking actually different and um, acting different how do you think different and act different if you used to sleep eight hours and you are not getting to your dreams start sleeping six hours and use two time. hours to research on how to get to your dreams so that is how you start making some reforms in the way you think the way you act and you act so subsequently you see that change mm -hmm. is coming you Thank cannot you remain coming. in the comfort zone and you, you find what you need outside your comfort zone. It's been a pleasure having you. Um, it's and always my we'll pleasure. wish you the luck once again and pray that the coronavirus goes away so you can have this meeting yeah. come July the 23rd and the 24th in Kampala, Uganda. Yeah, I will pray. the pray. Africa Youth Conference. Yeah. Congratulations once again on Yo. your appointment. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Say one word. I wish to uh, also wish uh, use this opportunity to emphasize on the coronavirus that we should not take it lightly. As long as uh, some people are putting rumors that we are blacks, it doesn't affect us. I want to say that no matter what it is, it's a global crisis and it is killing people. We wish to encourage our youth to take preventive measures and mm -hmm. until it is over, then we believe that we are safe. I was going to truncate you, but I realized that it was a big message you were passing across. That's why I let you do it. Thanks Thank sincerely you. for doing that. Right? Thank you so much. Now I'm going to introduce you to a lady who has empowered her own self. Now she actually operates in a male-dominated domain across Cameroon. I'm talking about artistic productions. This young girl is a choreographer. She's a video editor. She's a script writer. She is everything it takes to have a production union. Now she sets up a structure called Girls Boss Production and everybody who works in there is a girl. I'm talking about Tata Bon Beyala. Apparently she comes from the Northwest of Cameroon. Congratulations, you are on profile right now.